it Thursday. It is Thursday Power Hour. Welcome, welcome, wherever you are watching from. I'm excited to be here. As you can tell, I'm probably uh, not at home. I'm in a hotel. I'm on the road traveling, and that's why it looks a little bit, a little bit more fancy. We've got some fancy, fancy, uh, what are they called? Curtains. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy curtains and chairs. Christina's on here. Good morning, good afternoon, Christina. Uh, watching there. Let me know where you're watching from. I'd love to give you a shout out. Um, like I said, we are traveling. We are on our way shortly. Uh, we're going to be going to Redemptive uh, Grace Church in New Brunsfeld this weekend. Uh, so we'll hopefully see some of you there. We've got uh, Kansas City on here. Elinda's in the UK. I know that Christina's in Florida. We've got Daughter of the King here from California. Man, this is fun. We've got people watching from all over the world. Uh, Joy's in Sebastian, Florida. Uh, Seal's in uh, the Netherlands. We are going to be going to the Netherlands really soon. The first two weeks of March, we're going to be doing our European tour. Tishy's in Oklahoma. Paul is in Virginia. Jay's in Illinois. Dale's in Louisiana. What are, oh, they're going fast now. Hang a second. I see Tasmania, Australia, Fort Worth. Okay, another one from California, Nigeria, <laughs> Nebraska. I'm sorry if I don't catch your name. When they go through fast, I, I, I miss them. Seychelles, I see that on there. Florida again. Sybil's in Florida. Man, this is exciting. I, this is one thing I love about technology is we get to join with people all over the world. Zimbabwe, Sacramento, Columbia, Tennessee. Uh, we've, we've got evangelists on here as well. Come on. It's going to be a good day. Uh, Pastor Don Richie's in Columbia, Tennessee. We love you guys. Alberta, Canada, Michigan, California. Come on. It's fun. Super fun. So uh, here <laughs> we are. Good, good afternoon. We're going to get into the Word. If you're new here on Power Hour, let me just say, we are going to have a time in the Word um, together today, encouraging you, building you up in your faith. Um, and then we're going to pray for your prayer requests. I see Angela's in Tanzania. That's really cool. Uh, we love our African family. Uh, we have a, quite a large um, imprint, we'd say, in Africa. We do have offices. Many of you don't know this, but we have offices in Johannesburg, South Africa. And so we often go over to Africa each year and minister in different African nations. We love, um, we love Africa. We love the continent. And we haven't been to every country yet, but we are planning on it. Amen. Rockledge, Florida. Uh, Evangelist in Pakistan. Wow, that's awesome. Well, welcome. Uh, it is my favorite hour of the week also, being on Power Hour. I love to be able to connect with you all and just stand in agreement for your prayer needs. We are going to have a time in the Word today, but then we're going to get to your prayer request, things that really are on your heart, and we're going to come into agreement. You know, I, I just like to think that we're a family here, and um, you know, there is no time, space, distance when it comes to the Word of God. We are connected at a heart level, and faith goes across the airwaves. So um, I would encourage you, be ready with your prayer requests at the end. If you put them in the comments now, they're going to fly by, and um, by the time we get to, to praying for you, um, they're going to have zoomed up the list, and I won't be able to find them again. So help me by way to hold, just hold fire on your prayer requests until the end when we begin praying and then I'll have more chance of being able to see them and I'll do my very best to be able to pray for you personally. So I would encourage you to go ahead and share um, this stream, like and subscribe if you are watching on YouTube and um, share if you are on Facebook. Every week on Power Hour, we also have a giveaway and we pick somebody that has been sharing the stream. So if you go ahead and press and like and subscribe, share it, and then type in the comments that you've shared it. When it comes to next week, what we'll do is we'll look through that list of people that commented, shared, and we'll pick someone to be uh, the winner of our giveaway this week. But last week, we gave away All Is Not Lost, our CD said, and, uh, and digital download. And the winner of that, can I get a drum roll, please? is Chris Shuddy. Chris Shuddy, um, what we need you to do, um, I think you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching one of our YouTube viewers, all you need to do is um, go on over and email us at info at terrydays.com, your mailing address, and we'll get that sent right out to you. Amen. We need to know your mailing address, otherwise you can't receive it. So info at terrydays.com is our ministry email. And congratulations to you on that CD series. I, I can't remember how many CDs are on there, but it's a great teaching. It's going to help you walk in victory. Chris Shuddy is the recipient of our giveaway from last week. This week, we are giving away. Thank you. We are giving. I've got my beautiful assistant here. Um, this week, we are giving away um, Hearing God. 
See this? Hearing God. This is our devotional. This is a really powerful devotional. And um, this is going to bless you because, you know, this goes through each day. You've got a, a Bible scripture in there, passage of encouragement, some action points. Hearing God is our Hearing God devotional. And we're actually going to give this away to people. And if you would like to receive this, we are feeling very generous. So if you would like to receive this as a PDF version, you can get this anywhere in the world here in God Devotional. And so I would encourage you, just go on over to our store, our web store at teradez.com. And in there, you can put on, um, you put it in the store um, like you were buying it. But instead of paying for it, don't pay for it because we want to give it to you for free. You put it in the coupon code Teradez TV, all capitals, no spaces, Teradez TV, T-E-R-R-A-D-E-Z TV. And um, you'll be able to download that at no cost because our partners are so amazing. They've already paid for it for you, okay? So make sure you go ahead and get that. That's our giveaway um, uh, today, amen? So go ahead and do that. But Chris Shetty, congratulations on being a giveaway winner from last week. Okay, so shout outs, we've done that. I think, I think we're getting through our housekeeping. Uh, where are we going? Yes, that's a good point. Where are we going? Upcoming events while people are joining in. Let me do this. Um, we are gonna. We have got a whole list of places that we are going. Upcoming events this weekend. We're going to be at Redemptive Grace Ministries, New Brunsford, Texas, February the third and the fourth. So we're going to be meeting on the Saturday morning, and then we're going to be doing a Sunday morning service as well. So, and you're going to get a little bit of everything there. We're going to be doing health and wealth on, on, uh, on, on over the weekend. So make sure you join us at Redemptive Grace Ministries. That's, a, that's going to be powerful. Then on February the 18th, we're going to be out in um, Faith Builders Family Church, Pastors Dan and Nancy Thompson, and that's in Banning, California. So we're going across to the coast there. Then March the 1st through the 16th. This is exciting. I'm ex so excited about this. We are going to be doing a European tour. We're going to some countries that we have never been to before. So we're going to be um, in the UK, in Switzerland. We've been to the UK before, obviously, <laughs> the motherland. But new for us will be Switzerland, the Netherlands, um, Austria, and Germany. And, um, and Hungary will be new um, for Ashley. I've ministered in Hungary before, but it, I mean, it's going to be new for us to both be there at the same time. So if you can join us at any one of these events, um, you can find all the information over on our website at teradez.com uh, forward slash events. It'll take you right there. And then you'll be able to find all of our um, all of our upcoming events on there. Also, super excited in The Cure is our annual healing conference. It's going to be um, April the 25th to the 27th. And so people from all around the world will be flying into that. It's going to be held in, in Karis Bible College at Woodland Park in Colorado. And um, Andrew Womack is going to be one of the speakers as well, along with Ashley and myself. We are so excited. That is going to be awesome. We know that people are going to be powerfully um, powerfully healed. We're looking forward. And I know many of you actually watched online The Cure from last year, or you attended in person, and we you sent in your, your testimony. So i um, super excited about that. You are not going to want to miss it. Make sure you join us on our upcoming events. But right now, if you haven't already pressed shared um, or um, press shared, press is terrible English, isn't it? Press share if you're watching on Facebook, like and subscribe if you're on Facebook and comment. Let us know that you've done that. That'll be super helpful. I would encourage you to do that because we are going to get into the word right now and then we're going to be praying for your personal prayer requests. So listen up. This is going to be fun. Let's take a moment and just pray. I'm, I'm not going to be on here on for too long today because I have actually have a plane to catch. But <laughs> but here we are live from the hotel doing our best here to minister to your needs. Amen. So um, I just want to encourage you, go ahead and press share. But right now, let's Let's take a moment and pray and just thank the Lord. Lord, I thank you that we get to be together today all around the world, watching from wherever we're watching. I know there are people watching in their car. There are people traveling. There are people in their homes, in their offices, on their lunch breaks. Lord, I thank you and I bless each one of them in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just ask you to give us um, understanding, words of revelation. Holy Spirit, make this word become revelation to us, not just something that goes in one ear and comes out the other, but something that we can really take and apply to our life to a point where it is going to change us and the world around us. We believe and we receive in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, um, I want to talk about this subject, Hear and Be Healed. You know, we're going to jump in every time and we meet on Power Hour, we jump into the Word of God because Jesus, you know, He sent, the Lord sent His Word and healed us. Psalm 1720. Jesus, the Word became flesh. And so the Word of God is really the difference maker in our lives today. We have so many resources 
for you to be able to get into the Word of God for yourself. Check them all out on our website. But today I'm going to start here. And this is um, one of the miracles of Jesus. Many of you will know that I go through the miracles of Jesus regularly. Um, and just, um, I always learn something new. It doesn't matter how many times you've read the same passage. The, the Word is alive and it's effective. And um, it ministers to me. And I always learn something new. Even if I have read the same passage a number of times. So this passage is in Luke chapter 5. And it's the healing of the paralytic. And it's mentioned in two of the other Gospels, in, um, in Mark uh, 2 and also in Matthew chapter 9. And um, we're going to start over here. Um, you know, this is I, I love, one of the reasons I really love this passage of Scripture particularly. Um, in all of it, and we're going to look at in all different um, accounts of this passage, is that it's such a testimony of people um, that came together as a community which, you know, it touches my heart being here on a live stream with you all because we're a community standing with each other for each other's miracles. This man was a paralytic and yet he had four friends. We like to say four crazy friends, but um, they're crazy in a good way. You know, when we come together as a body, um, Christ is there in the middle of, in the midst of us. He, where we are gathered, where two or three are gathered, there's a lot more of us gathered here today than that. But God is right here in the midst of us. And there is a power of unity. These people came together on behalf of their friend. They stood for their friend. And, um, you know, for uh, to a certain extent, he was kind of passive in this. He was de um, debilitated to the point where he was incapacitated. He was paralyzed, had to be carried everywhere. Probably, um, that's right, Christina says, for fearless friends. I like that. Um but you know, when you are believing God for something, and I know many of you are on here today because you are believing God for a miracle, know this, you are not alone. You are not alone. If you don't have anyone around you, if you have no family members supporting you, no friends with skin on close by in a close vicinity that are standing with you, know this, that we are here standing with you. The community of believers here um, on Terridas Ministries and on and, and, and different social media platforms, we have phone ministers as well. Ashley and myself, we are standing with you in agreement for your miracle. So you are not alone. It may seem like you're alone. It may seem like you are. You have no one around you to stand with you, but we're standing with you amen and we're going to pray for you at the end so this i love this idea of community you know in matthew um chapter 9 let's um actually let's start in luke real quickly i'm going to jump between a few things here but in luke chapter 5 actually back on up to to ver verse 16 verse 16 of luke chapter 5 starts just before this stirring it gives us a little context what is going on you know, Jesus came back. He's just came down from the mountain. He's healed a man of epilepsy in this passage here. And it says in verse um, 15, yet even more so his fame went everywhere and great crowds came together to hear and be healed by him of their infirmities, right? So this is, this is really important. They came to hear and be healed. You know, um, as Jesus performed miracles and he went about, his fame went ahead of him. And every time people heard the word, they heard, you know, have you heard about this man, Jesus? He's going around. Could he be the Messiah? Could he be the Son of God? He's going around. Maybe he's a, maybe he's a teacher. Maybe he's a sorcerer. I don't know. But there's a power coming out of him, and he's changing people's lives. As people started to hear, his fame went around. Word got around. You know, they say that, that uh, the bad news travels fast. Let me tell you, good news travels faster. The good news of the gospel travels fast. People started to hear what was going on. Don't listen to the press and everything that's going on in the media. Listen to the good news of God. Let the fame of Jesus be on your lips. But this fame went around and people started to hear. And when we start to hear of good things, when we start to hear about the goodness of God, when we start to hear, you know what? Jesus is still healing people today. When we start to hear of a, of a shared testimony, there's something that happens on the inside of our heart. It encourages us. It stirs us up. It makes us start to think, well, you know, if God did it for them, maybe he'll do it for me. You know, this certainly was our experience when 
When we were believing for our daughter Hannah to be healed, many of you have heard her testimony. She was healed of an incurable autoimmune disease. She was only given a few days to live, but we heard some testimonies. We saw some videos. We saw some people that were being healed. And this blew our minds because we knew that God is no respecter of persons. And if he healed this one person, that means he could heal our daughter. It encouraged us at a heart level to have hope, to have ex expectation. It stirred us up in our faith. And I want to encourage you, if you are believing God for something, don't be quit, listen, quit listening to all the negativity and stir yourselves up. Listen, search out people's testimonies of people that have been healed of the thing that you're struggling with because it will do something to your soul. It will encourage you. It will soften the, the, the ground of your heart to receive your miracle. So they came to hear and to be healed of their infirmities. You see, when we hear something, and it sparks an interest on, on the inside of us. It, it produces an action. When we hear something and we are so convinced that what we hear is true, we cannot be helped but to be moved in a direction by it. We respond to it, right? This is why marketing works, because people hear something and then they respond to it. Even the world understands that. And, um, and this, is, you know, this, is, this is super important. Somebody says on here they have a testimony that Jesus showed up while she slept, gave her some sort of, uh, she had a touch from the Lord, and she's 100% healed from autism. Well, that's awesome. That's um, Amber. Uh, my Emily has, well, that's awesome. Um, Amber, I want to hear more about that, by the way. But I just saw your testimony flash up. Listen, I believe that a Amber has been part of our community for a long time, and her children have been suffering for the number of conditions. And here she is sharing some testimony of healing. I love that. I love that. And you know what, what God is doing in Amber's family? He's doing in yours too. But hear and be healed. Hear and be healed. Let what you hear, hear the right thing. Hear the word of God and let what you hear stir you up so that you become fertile ground to, for, for that healing to manifest. Amen. I look forward to hearing more about that, Amber. That's exciting. But it says here that um, they came to hear and be healed. And, you know, I'm going to jump on over here into Matthew chapter 9 and verse 1. It says, this is the same, we're talking about the palsied man here. It says here um, in Matthew's account that Jesus, he entered a boat, crossed over and came to his own city. And they brought to him a man that was sick with paralysis, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. Now, that he gives quite a synopsis there, quite a shortened account. But the point is that Jesus crossed over and came back to his own city. Now, this is significant. What Jesus was doing was he was coming home. The city where this occurred in was a city called Capernaum. Now, in that time, there was only about 1,000, 1,500 people there. Um, but he came to Capernaum. Now, Capernaum was where Jesus had his own home. Many people don't realize this, that Jesus actually had a house. He didn't just travel around. Yes, he had a traveling ministry, but he had a home base. Now, this wasn't where he was born. He was born in Bethlehem. He was raised in Nazareth, but his home base and his ministry headquarters was in Capernaum. And so many of Jesus' miracles are in this town. Why is this significant? Because this would mean that these people here in this town, it actually says, if you jump on um, a little bit further, um, it says in, I'm going back in Luke 5 here, in Luke 5 verse 17, on a certain day he was teaching and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were sitting nearby. They come from every town, Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. So this was not uncommon. People heard, you know, this was Jesus' home base where his ministry's headquarters were. The word would have gotten around. They would have you'd been used to coming and hearing and receiving. This was their this was their routine. Even so much so that the Pharisees, teachers of the law, were traveling from Galilee, from Ju from Judea, from Jerusalem. They the the crowds was coming far and wide. They were used to hearing. Now some of the people that were hearing weren't supportive. Right, so we've got we've got people here. We've got the Pharisees here, but the, the the crowds were swarming, and that's why the famous part about this story is the people, the crowds had come, and they couldn't all fit in the house because they were used to Jesus coming back to his house, and then word got around, hey, Jesus come back from a ministry trip, he's back home, and and you know what, we need to come to here and be healed. Why am I telling you this? Because this tells us that expectation was important. People had got to, to understand that you come listen to Jesus and you receive healing. 
there is hearing and then there is receiving, right? Hearing and then there is healing. You see, oftentimes we hear a lot of vocabulary. We hear a lot of words, we hear a lot of different opinions and it doesn't result in anything. But what they had come to hear, what changed their heart was they came to hear from Jesus. They came to hear from the very word made flesh and they came with an expectation. I want you to come today. Let your hearing not just be in one ear and out the other, but come with fresh ears to hear and to receive. There is a hearing and there is a healing. They didn't just come to hear like they hear somebody on the soapbox in the town square. No, they came to hear and be healed. You can hear and be healed today. Healing is a natural response of hearing the gospel. It is a natural response. When we take the word of God, when we mix it with expectation, there is a natural response that happens on the inside of us. You know, Kathleen has a good point here. What do you do if you're surrounded by unbelief? Don't be discouraged because Jesus was also surrounded by unbelief. The Pharisees, the kings of unbelief, the kings of the religious spirit, the defenders of the doctrine here in their own eyes, were here. There was plenty of unbelief. So that crowd was very mixed. There were people that came to hear and be healed, but there were people that came to just hear so that they could catch Jesus doing something wrong and later go on to arrest him. It was a mixed multitude. But if your heart is open to hear and to receive today, if you have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord God is saying, there is not an amount of unbelief that can stop you. The devil just isn't that powerful. He cannot stop you from hearing and receiving today. Otherwise, he would have stopped you from receiving hearing and receiving salvation in the first place. Don't give him that much credit. The power of God on the inside of you is greater than he that surrounds you in the world. Amen. So don't be discouraged today. Jesus was returning from a ministry trip. Now, the ministry trip that Jesus was returning for was the one that he went to, to all the other way, the other side of the lake to heal the demoniacs. He went all that way, and you can bet that that ministry trip was full of unbelief. He was hitting the devil head on. The devil was not powerful enough to stop those demoniacs from being free. And he came back to his hometown here of Capernaum, and he's birth, the birth, he's, um, not his birthplace, but the headquarters of his ministry. You know, Matthew 4.13 says, And leaving Nazareth, he came and he lived in Capernaum. Okay, so there's evidence for that. In Matthew 4.24, it says, They brought to him all the sick people with various diseases and those that had paralysis. Why is that important? This was not a new event. People were coming with expectation because they'd heard other people hear and be healed of, of paralysis. Why do you think this man with paralysis was brought by these four crazy friends to Jesus's house that day? Because they'd heard a testimony of other people of paralysis also being healed. This is one of the reasons it says in Revelation 12, 11, they overcame him, that's the enemy, by the, by the, um, the word of God and by um, the word of their testimony, what Jesus has done for them and also by their own testimony. Testimonies are powerful because, you know, it encourages people. When you hear of somebody else being healed of something you're dealing with, it gives you confidence, right? So they, they heard that other people were being healed of paralysis and they brought their friend this is why we encourage you to testify. Now, now it says um, in, Mark, in Mark 2 verse 1, it says, and it was reported that he was in the house. Jesus was there. And, and many gathered so that there was no room to receive them, not even at the door. So many people had heard Jesus is back in town. The healing power is, avail is available. That the expectation of the people had grown. They couldn't even get in there. They couldn't even get in the door. So you can see, you can imagine this, that people are spilling outside. They're out in the street. They're looking in the windows. They're looking in the doorways. The crowd is so great even, including Pharisees, including unbelievers that just came for a looky-loo, right? Um, that these, these four friends knew that they had to get close to Jesus. They wanted to get close to him. It says, so word got around, Jesus was home, the people came and Jesus was preaching the word to them. It says in Mark 2, uh, verse 2, the Pharisees were sitting nearby. You see, the Pharisees were right there listening to Jesus' teaching, trying to catch him out on something. But I want you to see something here. You know, there's, there's many of us that have given up believing God because maybe we've had, um, we've just been disappointed. 
Maybe uh, we've seen um, our prayers are unfulfilled in some way. You know, uh, maybe um, somebody said something and it hasn't come to pass. Maybe we've been to an event and we just haven't seen ourselves healed. Maybe we've had a lot of people pray for us and there's been no results. I want to encourage you for a moment, just start with a clean slate, okay? And, and I'm going to be a little bold here. Many of you have never had me pray for you. Okay, I'm going to be bold. I'm not boasting on myself, but I'm boasting on the Lord and the power of God through me, through his authority that God has given me, amen, and given every believer, actually, to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. You know, we need to start with a clean slate. Stop letting our preconceived ideas about all the times we've been prayed for, all the things that we haven't seen, cloud our expectation when it comes to this time now in this moment. We came to hear and be healed. We didn't come to hear and go away disappointed. So this is one, one trick of the enemy um, to get you into discouragement, to lower your expectation because he knows that if you believe the word of God, you will receive from the word of God and he's terrified. He doesn't mind you hearing it. He worries about whether, what's gonna happen after you hear it, whether you put faith in it, whether you put confidence in that word as being true for you because he knows the power of it on the inside of you. Man, this is, this, this, is, this is huge. You know, Amy says, that's me, Carly. So long I had an injury before she received healing. You know, we need to, uh, we need to come with a, with, a, with a fresh slate, with, with ears to hear. Say to, somebody needs to say this, today is my day. Put that in the comments. Today is my day. Today is the day of my salvation. Today is the day of my healing, of my breakthrough. It's personal. You know, um, he, when Jesus met these, these four crazy friends and this, this man that was lowered down, you know, they, they, they weren't necessarily believers before this incident. So don't discount yourself thinking that, you know, I haven't been saved very long or I haven't, you know, got a great understanding of the Bible. If you just come, no matter where you start, if you just come with an expectation I'm telling you, the Lord will meet you in that place. He'll meet you in that place. He's not looking for a resume. He's not looking for your Bible college degree. He's not looking for your exemplary church attendance or your giving record. He'll accept you just as you are, amen? You're in the right time at the right place. And so, um, somebody says, um, and Anne Marie says, today's my birthday. Come on, happy birthday. It's a great day to receive healing. Let's jump back in here. This is um, Luke 5 and verse 17. It says, the power of the Lord was present to heal the sick. One thing I want you to see here, and um, you know, maybe if you've got your Bible out there, you'll see the word present as italicized in italics. Um, and that is because it has been added to the scripture. Why is that significant? Well, because sometimes words are added to help of their understanding, but that word wasn't in the original language. This is important because if we just read it, you know, the power of the Lord, the healing power, the dunamis power, the miracle working power of the Lord was present to heal the sick. We could be under the misunderstanding that, you know what, they were just the lucky ones. Hey, it was just like the lottery came in on that for them that day. They just happened to be there at the right time, at the right place. And the power of the Lord was switched on. Jesus was in a good mood or, you know, there's plenty other days of the week when the, where the healing power wasn't there. But that point in, in that time, they were fortunate enough to be there where the healing power of God was flowing. You know, that's wrong. The power of the Lord was to heal. If you read in, um, in the original text, actually the, um, the, the Young's Living Translation, it obliterates, it just omits that word present entirely. And it says, and the power of the Lord was to heal. The power of the Lord was to heal then, it is to heal today, and it will be to heal tomorrow. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means there is never a bad day to receive healing. The power of God is always on. It is not in short supply. It is not limited. It was not just when Jesus was walking the earth. It is right now. It is today. It is yes today like it was yes then and it will be yes tomorrow. The power of God to heal you today, right now, in this moment, or wherever you're watching this in the future, is right now. It is right now for you, amen? Don't be, um, don't be shortchanged into thinking that this is just a, a fleeting moment a passing time that was then, but it isn't today. No, you know, the power of God is to heal you right now. So it says, now some men brought in a man on a bed that was paralyzed and they searched, he says, these friends, they searched for ways to get in and lay him 
before him. They didn't give up. They didn't quit. They didn't think, oh my gosh, you know, you know, I've got to go here and I've got to climb up on this ladder and I've got to rip the tiles off the roof. And that's just so hard. It's just so hard to travel. It's just so hard to, you know, make time in my busy schedule. It's just so hard to save up money to get there. It's just so hard to believe God. No, they could have come up with a thousand different excuses, but here they are. They get to a place and you know, I'm sure that carrying a man on a bed through the streets of Capernaum wasn't comfortable. It wasn't comfortable for him. It wasn't comfortable for them. It wasn't even ground. Maybe it was hot. Maybe it was dusty. Maybe it was in an inconvenient point in time and they had to take off work to be there. You know, I'm sure there were plenty of things here that weren't convenient. But rather than being stopped by, by um, an obstacle, mother, they, they get to the, the venue and they can't get a seat. I can't tell you how many times I've been to events and I've been to events that are ours and I've been to events that, you know, I'm just attending and people all put out because they didn't get, um, they didn't get a seat or they didn't get the best view or they had someone in front of them that was chatting the whole time and distracting them. Conditions weren't perfect. You know, we need to understand that the enemy doesn't want you to receive. And he will put conditions in your way that aren't perfect so that your flesh gets all bent out of shape and upset about stuff distracted. It's time to grow beyond that. I want to encourage you. It's time to grow beyond that rather than falling for the tricks of the trade, the tricks of the enemy, the tricks of distraction, the whinings of the flesh. You know, that flesh is pretty moany sometimes. And, and just think, you know, God has something for me. And I'm going to push forward until I get it. I'm going to push forward. I'm not going to be distracted by things that are going on in the natural but I know that I can hear and be healed today. So if you need to cut out some distractions right now, then go ahead, and, go ahead and do it, amen? Go ahead and do it because the Lord has healing for you. Don't be distracted by things that are going on. Don't be distracted by comments, by whisperings, by the doorbell, by whatever. They had to push through. They searched for ways to bring him in and lay him before him. He says, when they came, they could not find a way to get him in because of the crowd. So they went up on the roof and they let him down through the tiles with his bed in the midst before Jesus. Let me just show you this bit. When he saw their faith, this is Luke 5, 20. When he saw their faith, you can see faith in people. You can see faith in the way that they respond, in the, in the words that come out of the mouth and the decisions and the actions that they take. You can see faith in the way that people pursue the word of God. These people were not, these friends were not going to quit just because the, the circumstances were not ideal. They pursued beyond the distraction. They pursued beyond the unbelief. They had tenacity about them. Why? Because such was the confidence on the inside of them. They said, hang on a minute. I don't care what the conditions are. When they, when they heard that Jesus had been going around healing paralyzed people, it didn't matter how bad it was, they knew that they were going to get their friend there. That hearing on the inside of them produced faith. You know, Romans 10, 17 says that, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So their faith came because they had heard of other people's testimonies and such was their confidence. Actually, in the Amplified, it says he saw their confidence in him. And, and you know, faith looks confident. He could see their confidence. He could see, physically see the demonstration of their faith by their actions. Man, that is so powerful. And he says to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. Now, this would have irritated the Pharisees and the scribes that were around no end. Because in those times, people knew that the only people that could um, give an offering uh, or a sacrifice, an atonement for sin were the priests. They were the only people that could, and that had to be a blood animal sacrifice, right? They had animal sacrifices then. But Jesus was basically saying, your sins are forgiven you. The audacity of Jesus in the ears of the Pharisees would have rubbed them all up the wrong way. This, you know, Jesus basically here was saying, yeah, I have the ability to forgive sin. Why is this so important? Because they knew if sin could be forgiven, then sickness could be forgiven. You see, what Jesus is very intentional here, he's putting, he's putting the salvation of our souls and healing together right here in the same passage. And many of us today, you know, back then, 
people would, um, you know, they, they may have seen some physical demonstrations. They may have heard, right? That's why they're there. They've heard Jesus healing people. They may have seen some physical demonstrations of miracles, but to be forgiven for sin, for something that they could not see, was something that, that they didn't even have a, um, a point of reference for. No one had that experience because no one could forgive sin. But he's Jesus saying, hang on, your man, your sins have been forgiven you. He was coming out and saying, yeah, I'm the son of God. And I'm here and I'm doing business and I'm, I'm, I'm in the forgiveness of sin business and the healing of people's bodies business. He says, the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, who is he that speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God alone? This is really interesting, right? Um, that they, 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 they were slow to understand that Jesus is saying that he is the son of God. When Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered them and says, why do you question in your hearts? What's easy to say? Your sins are forgiven you or rise up and walk. You know, these days people take for granted. They'll, they'll believe God for the forgiveness of their sin for something that they cannot see, but they struggle very much to believe in, in the healing of a body in something that, they, that requires physical evidence. Man, it's completely flipped the other way around. People say, oh, I'm saved, but I just don't know that I can believe God for healing. Well, why not? You're already an expert in the faith department. It's the same faith that you use to receive the salvation, the forgiveness of your sins that you're going to receive in a moment to, you're going to use to receive um, for the healing of your body. You've already determined, you've already operated in this saving faith on the inside of you. You don't have to worry. Let me just take this lie off the table. You have enough faith to receive your healing right now. You say, somebody needs to say that. I have faith to receive my healing right now. If you've received Jesus, that means that you have the faith of the Son of God on the inside of you. That's more than enough faith to receive your healing today. Don't worry about unbelief for now. Don't, I'm sure those things will come against you, but the faith of Jesus on the inside of you is far more powerful than, than any unbelief that surrounds you. All of the people that Jesus prayed for had a measure of unbelief. He was surrounded by unbelief. You know, those days, people think these days are dark and ungodly. Those days are so dark and ungodly. When Jesus walked the earth, I mean, they were sacrificing virgins in the temple. I mean, they had the gods to fertility all around them. They had gods for this and gods for that. And they were, they were brazen. They were everywhere. They had idol worship everywhere. There were very dark, ungodly days and Jesus came in the middle of them and he started a, a, a healing ministry right there in the middle of all of that darkness. Just think about that for a moment. Those days were not any less ungodly than they, than they are today. It is the same power of God that overcomes the darkness on the, that, that, that surrounds you that then that it is today. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You have faith to receive your healing today. You have faith to receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. More than enough faith. And when Jesus looked at these people, he says he saw that their confidence was in him. He said, I can work with that. I can work with them. I don't know about you. My confidence is in Jesus. It's not in my ability to do anything. Carly here couldn't, couldn't uh, raise a fly from the dead, right? But the power of God in me, I'm telling you, it should make the devil scared. It should make the devil afraid of me because I know who it is in whom I have believed. The power of God on the inside of me, the power of God on the inside of you today is the difference maker. It is the difference maker. Quit listening to the lies of the enemy that's telling you your condition is beyond help. You've been sick too long. You've done too many things wrong. You've believed the wrong way. You're surrounded by unbelief. You know, you've taken the medicine. You've had the surgery, you know. Don't believe God. Don't believe the lies of the enemy that says that you are discounted from receiving supernatural healing today. That Jesus is not discounting you. You know, he didn't leave the, issue, the, the woman with the issue of blood after 12 years of, doctor, of doctor's appointments and, and, and treatments. Why would he leave you just because you, you, took a, you took a tablet or you took a vaccination or you had, a, you had a, a, a surgery? God is not holding back on you. He'll meet you in your place of faith wherever it is, wherever it is. Put your faith in Jesus and you can receive today. You can receive today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I want to take a moment. You know, the, the end of this story is the man, you know, Jesus said to him, 
Um, man that you may know that the son of man has on authority on earth to forgive sins. And he said to the paralyzed man, I say to you, rise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he rose before them, took up what she had, departed to his own house. And you know, they were all amazed. Here's something that happened. When that man put his faith in Jesus, there was a response that was required. He couldn't just lay on the bed, wait for healing to come upon him like a glory cloud and not do anything. Sometimes we miss this. When we really believe something, it, pro it, it produces an action on the inside of us. Faith is not passive where it just sits and it does nothing. There is something that it, there is a response required. Kind of like if you received um, uh, an invitation to a party, to a wedding, right? There is, there is a slip in there. There is a place there these days where you have to RSVP. You need to respond response required. If you want to go to the party, if you want to shop to the wedding, you've got to say, yep, I believe it. I believe it's going to be at that time on that day with those people and I'm all in. I'm going to be there. You have to then show up. You can't just say, yeah, I'm going to be there. The, the wedding is going to happen where you're not. You have to go somewhere. You have to show up. I'm encouraging you today. First step is to believe the word of God. To say, I believe it, I receive it, that's mine. The next stage is to show up. How do we show up in the realm of faith? We put some action to our, to our belief. Faith in action. It says, I believe that that's mine. I receive it in my physical body. And therefore, the, the, um, the action of me is to move in the direction of that hearing. And so, you know, that man on that bed, his friends had got him there. His friend's faith had got him there. Um, and I want to encourage you today. Your friend's faith right here on this live stream has got you here. You're tuned in, but the next part is yours. The next part is yours. They say, I believe it, I receive it, it's mine. Now do something, then do something. Respond in some way that you maybe couldn't before. You know, think through, and the Lord shows you, because this is different for every person. What's my corresponding action of faith? You know, we don't do, we don't do actions to, to pr prove our faith. But there is an action that's corresponding. We, we act because we believe something. We don't act in order to believe something. There's a difference there. Sometimes people say, Carly, should I stop taking my medication? Well, no, not unless the Holy Spirit has dropped that in your heart to do and you are absolutely convinced. You know, we don't, we don't do an action to prove our faith, but there is a corresponding action that goes when we really believe something. You know, when, when I mentioned our daughter Hannah, when we really believed that she'd received, we went out and, you know, she couldn't eat, so we fed her, right? That, was, that wasn't something that we were trying to prove. We were just absolutely confident that God had healed her and, you know, healthy people eat, so that's what we did. When God had healed me of epilepsy, I knew that I didn't need to take those medicines anymore because I wasn't sick anymore, you know? Now, now I didn't need somebody else to agree with me. In fact, I had plenty of people that were quite anti what I was about to do but when I had confidence in Jesus, there was no one that could convince me out of it. This is so important. We need to know that our confidence is in God. And when this man had heard the invitation by Jesus to take up his bed and walk, his, his faith journey was to do something that he couldn't do before. So maybe if you're, if you're incapacitated in some way, maybe you go to bend or stretch or move. We're going to pray for you in a moment. But the corresponding actions after the prayer is to do something that maybe you couldn't do before. Maybe it's to take your hearing aid out and, 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 and try hearing without assistance or take your glasses off and try trying to see without a visual, uh, visual aid. Maybe, maybe it is um, to try to, to move or to bend or to stretch or to do something that you couldn't do before. You see, when we have confidence, there is a corresponding action. And that's why he said to this man, rise, take up your bed and walk. The man could have said, you know what? I can't do that. I'm paralyzed. And he would have stayed exactly where he was, exactly where he was. See, God loves you no matter where you are, but if we want to walk in the things of God, we need to respond to the word of God. Amen? And so taking away um, and removing those lies and those distractions is a big part of hearing and agreeing and then receiving. And so I would like to take a moment right here to pray for some of your prayer needs. And, and we have, a, you know, we have a just... Just so many people on there, there's hundreds of people on here between our platforms that are watching this today. You have a power of agreement that's right here present, um, ready to, to, for you to receive. I want to show you something. Let's go, let me go back on. 
Let me go back onto the comments so I can see where you're at here. I want to see these comments. I'm going to pray. And then um, it's, <laughs> Megan says her stomach area is twitching. Some of you are already receiving healing on the inside of you. You're already receiving healing. Father God, I just thank you. Join, stretch out your hand towards the screen. Father God, I just thank you that your power is here right now. It's right now healing and moving through people's bodies. Right now it's moving. We come into agreement, Lord, that your power is flowing through people from the top of their head to the very soles of their feet. It is driving out every lie of the enemy. I hear the Lord saying that he is turning off the noises. There are some noises around you. There are some noises on the inside of you. There are some noises in your body, but he's silencing the noises right now in Jesus' name. The ringing in the ear, the noises in the head, the creaking in the joints. There are noises. There are sounds around you. There are sounds of unbelief. There are words that are even coming back to you of other people's unbelief. Right now, we cancel the noise. We silence the noises in Jesus' name. Jesus name. I thank you, Lord, that there is strength coming back to people's bodies, that there is eyes that are starting to function, that there are ears that are at peace, that there's healing coming back into places that were par paralyzed, where there is paralysis. In Jesus' name, I declare over you peace in Jesus' name, peace in your body, peace in your hearing, in the ringing, in the noises, peace in your body, in the nervous systems. Thank you, Lord. I speak peace over your nerves that are inflamed and pain that is being caused. Fibromyalgia, random pain. Somebody has random shooting pains through your body. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, that for nerves that are coming back to life. Back to life in Jesus' name. We command uh, that, that there's nerves that need to be reconnected. There's, they, they, they have been separated in some way. But there, there is life coming back where there has been nerves that have, that have become disconnected or um, deadened. Nerve endings that have become deadened. Right now, we command them to come back to life. Stephanie, we take authority of that cancer and we command it to be gone from your body. Gone from your body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There is, I see somebody, you had an impact on the side of your head, um, an impact on the side of your head that uh, caused concussion and traumatic brain injury. The Lord is bringing wholeness back to you, wholeness back to you in Jesus' name. There's somebody that's been, um, they, they, they were born with a part of their bone structure missing. There's a restoration of bones for you in Jesus' name. Right now, we are coming back. We are coming. We are commanding those those things, um, those bones, to come back to life, to create, be recreated in Jesus' name. I just speak over people that are in danger of loss, that are in danger of losing something. And um, that there's there's a loss of a, a child, a loss of vision, a loss of hearing, a loss of mobility. Uh, there is loss. There is there is a, the, the enemy is trying to take something from you or somebody that you love. And right now we cancel the assignment, the stealing and the killing and the destroying assignment of the enemy to take from you, to cause loss in your life, a loss of life, a loss of, of, of freedom, a loss of vitality. We cancel the assignment of the enemy over you in Jesus' name. And we say, no, you will not be able to kill or steal or destroy because Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly in Jesus' name. We say those babies are going to stay in the womb until full term. We say your life is going to be extended to the full range of the allotment of your days, that you shall not die but live and declare the goodness of God in the land of the living. I thank you, Lord, that, that no degenerative um, disc disorders can, can reign in your body. Right now, we command, we command those discs to be whole, those bones to be strong in Jesus' name. Yes, we come against Lyme disease right now. We, the, the loss and the, the stealth of that Lyme disease right now, we command that to cease. We command those lying symptoms to be uh, to repent in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We come against that cervical dystonia. 
right now. We cancel that. A, bi a binocular vision disorder. We cancel that. Sciatica. We cancel that. Stomach digestive issues. We cancel that. Allergies. We cancel those in Jesus' name. Can cataracts. We cancel that in Jesus' name. These allergic reactions, we turn you off right now. We turn those off in Jesus' name. Those lumps, those bumps, those tumors, those cysts, in Jesus' name, leave right now. Pain in the legs. Somebody uh, has a problem with a fibula, and then it goes uh, a, a fibula and a tibia as well. Right now, in Jesus' name, we command pain and to leave and strength to come back. Strength to come back. Thank you, Lord. Somebody has... Um, uh, you've got like, there was a problem with the bone marrow um, and it's almost like the bone marrow has been removed and then you have uh, like a metal rod through the bone. They threaded it through the bone in Jesus' name. Right now, we just come on a wholeness over your leg bones and your bones in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We believe, Lord. We believe and we receive. Somebody has um, uh, a deviated septum. The Lord is healing that. And a tongue tie. You need to have a frenulectomy. Maybe this is a child. Um, but tongue be loosed in Jesus' name. Be loosed right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You know, even our pets, the Lord loves your pets. He loves your cats, your dogs, whatever. And, you know, you have authority. I prayed for a, a blind kitten in Mexico one time, had completely white eyes and uh, from, I know, cataracts or something. And the Lord instantly healed that cat. You know, our animals don't have unbelief. You can lay hands on your animals. And um, he's, they're all of his creations. So don't feel stupid about laying hands on your animals. Um, and they won't have the unbelief. <laughs> Amen. You can lay hands on those too. Right now, yes, we do, we agree, uh, Yolanda. Right now, put put your hand wherever that pain is at. We command healing in your back in Jesus' name. Full range of motions. I see somebody. You have a tilted pelvis, and um, it's caused all kinds of problems. But right now, we command that to rotate back into correct position in Jesus' name. Rotate that pelvis back in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Somebody has a problem. Um, the very top of their spine where their, their neck and their head connect. Um, and it's like it's on a different axis than it should be. The angle um, of your, your neck where it joins to your skull um, it is at the wrong angle or something. I don't know how this, this works, but there's a or like, a, so like an orbital misalignment somewhere. Um, right now, in Jesus' name, we command your bones to align, your spine to be straight, your, uh, your skull and your, and your uh, spine to, to connect as they should in Jesus' name. There is a problem with the C1, 2, 3 vertebrae. C1, C, not T, C, 1, 2, and 3 vertebrae. Somebody has, um, uh, actually, you've got... Uh, uh, there's a damage in one of your vertebrae. It's not formed correctly. There's been an impact there. The Lord is recreating that for you. Recreating. I command pain and from the head and the, the neck and the shoulders, all in this region, to be gone immediately. Gone immediately. I pull out. I have root pain in Jesus' name. We command those tentacles. Oh, somebody's had ten, like a... This is like a tumor with tentacles that is wrapped around the spine. Uh, I, there's a, I, th I see it also in the breast, in the chest region, that the, the, the tumor is growing and it has like these tendrils that come off of it. Right now, we cut those off in Jesus' name. We cut the tentacles of cancer off in Jesus' name. I command those blood vessels to become detangled where there has been a mass, a ball of, of, um, of, of just, I, I don't know how to explain this. I see a ball. It looks like an, a ball of wool, but they're blood vessels and nerves that are knotted together. Right now, we, we untangle that in Jesus' name. Iris says that's her nine-year-old granddaughter, the neck, the skull, the C1, and the C2. Right now, we command healing into your granddaughter, Iris. Wherever she is, we command that those bones to be knit back together, those cracks to be filled in in Jesus' name like they were never there. We command the mobility, the function, the circulation, the, the feeling, everything to come back through her spine in Jesus' name. We come, I, see, I see somebody in traction where things are being stretched like on a rack, like on a bed. I think you're probably in, 
maybe you're in a hospital bed, um, but there's traction, there's, a, there's, a, there's metal involved, there's a stretching involved. Right now, I command those that, that traction. Oh, Iris says she's in traction in Nottingham. Well, there you go. Right now, I command that to be done. A quick word, finished. Everything to be stretched now to the right length, to the right spacing in Jesus' name. We take authority over that situation. We command that traction to be successful and fast and completed. We call it completed in Jesus' name. Completed in Jesus' name. That the next time that there is an examination, they're like, I don't know what happened, but everything is in the right place. We can take that traction off. We can, we, it's fixed. We call it fixed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that your healing power. I see like a rotor rotor going through someone's intestines. And it is taking out all of the bad bacteria and, and the bad lining. And um, there's just new healthy stomach lining. New healthy stomach lining. Thank you, Lord. Somebody else says that they have uh, their, a problem with their necks. See, one, two, and three at a place. That is you, Amanda. Right now, in Jesus' name, put your hand right there where it is, and we just take authority over that, and we command those 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 vertebrae to be where they should be. Move where you should be in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We call those scans to come back healthy, to report the healing power of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You know there is no cancer. I don't care what stage is it, at, it, it is at that needs to intimidate us. Right now, in Jesus' name, we declare that stage of cancer ended. We command that cancer gone in Jesus' name, shriveled up from the roots, removed from the body. Thank you, Lord. There is somebody that is having heart surgery um, either today or as we speak. They're in surgery. Right now, the Lord is with you. I just want you to know this. Whenever you watch this, the Lord is with you. I thank you, Lord, that you are guiding those 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 surgeons' hands in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that as they go in to do what they need to do, they'll find out that um, they, they won't find what they're looking for because it won't be there anymore. I command those ventricles, those atriums, those nerves, those valves to be working as they should. Those blood vessels to be working as they should and in place. I command that blood pressure to be normal and the heart muscle to be whole. No sign of disease, no decay, no blockages in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. No narrowing. Somebody's been diagnosed with narrow um, arteries. You have narrowing of the arteries. The Lord is, oh, that's the rotor rotor. He's opening up, opening up those arteries in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We command that blood to flow every place it's supposed to go in Jesus' name with no let or no hindrance everywhere it's supposed to go. Touch, bring in life, bring in oxygen to every cell in the body in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. There is somebody, you have very cold hands and feet. I think it's this Raynaud syndrome. They're almost blue. They're painful. Your circulation is not where it should be. But right now, we just declare that blood to flow to your very extremities. Somebody's, you've had numbness on your fingertips. Numbness on your fingertips. And it's not because you've got calluses on there from playing the guitar. But you have numbness on your fingertips. A desensitivity. Right now, we command sensitivity to come back into your fingertips. Feeling to come back everywhere it's supposed to be. Everywhere it's supposed to be in Jesus' name. Thank you. I see a separation in the ear. I'm seeing a, some sort of separation in the ear. I think it's um, there's something on the back of the earlobe, like a lump on the back of the earlobe, and the separation on the inside is to do with the, the eardrum. Um, there's been a, some sort of uh, maybe a rupturing, a separation on the inside of your ear. The Lord is healing that right now. Renee says, Raynaud's syndrome is healed. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for, for bringing... Uh, there, there's pain. Somebody's had a hotness. I can't get away from this. You've had a real hotness um, in your ear. Um, like maybe it's an infection or something, but it says there's a swelling. There's, there's a redness. It's, it's pounding. Right now, we just command that to leave in Jesus' name, that redness, that swelling, that infection to leave in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's, there's something to do with the, the flap 
the, there's a little flap of skin, the epi, um, it's like the epiglottis or something. It covers the, it stops uh, food and things going down into your lungs when you eat. And, um, and, and there's somebody that's had a problem with, you've been uh, like inhaling food. Um, and, and I see a thickening. Somebody has to have a thickening. and They struggle with liquids. Right now, the Lord is healing you. In that, in that response, right now, we just command your body, your intestines to function as they should. I command you over you the ability to swallow all kinds of um, uh, liquid without inhalation, without risk of inhalation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ability and strength in those muscles, in the, inten in the intestines, in Jesus' name. There's somebody you have... Um, you have a problem with your uterus in that it's not um it's a weird shape it's not in the right place it has inflammation it has a uh, like a tumorous lumps and fibroids that are filling up the cavity right now i just command that uterus that uterine wall to be healthy and whole in jesus name the the the, the very muscle surrounding the uterus to be whole and healthy in jesus name Thank you, Lord. There is a there is somebody that um, they have an issue with endometriosis, and you have lesions that have popped up in various places in your body. Uh, right now, they're dissolving. They're dissolving in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We take authority over those. Thank you, Lord. Yes, ringing in the ears. Stop in Jesus' name. Stop. Here, there are so many people on here going through cancer. Let me just say this: cancer die in the name of Jesus. Cancer, die in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we believe and we receive every good and perfect thing that you've had for us today. Now, here's what I want you to do. Somebody's also being healed in their left foot. In their left foot. I don't know what that's about. I think it's due to the arches. Um, somebody says that they had the epiglottis of their daughter. She can't swallow. She's healed of this. Amen. I believe that. Amen. That was for you. Um, arches are coming back into somebody's left foot and their um, planar fasciitis is being healed. Right now, when they put your when you put your heel on the floor and tread on it, you're not going to feel that shooting pain anymore. It's being healed. Thank you, Lord. Listen, I want you to do something for me. I need to try this out. If you believe that you're healed, the healing power of God is flowing through your body. I want you to do something that you couldn't do. I want you to bend. I want you to stretch. You know, the power of God's flowing in you right now. It's flowing in you in your left foot. That's right, being healed in your left foot in the arch of the left foot as well. Right now, we command those bones to be strong, that pain to leave. Thank you, Lord. Left foot, be healed, be strong, be healthy. Get up, tread on it, tread on it. Move, bend, stretch, whatever you need to do. Test it out. If you're the one with the with the hips that were tilted, stand up straight. Put your put yourself against the wall. Make sure you're level. These prism glasses are off. Come on. Their left foot is healed. Their toe joints are healed. Man, this is awesome. People are receiving. Put, put, put in it what is healed. Chris, Chris says his wrist is healed. Chris, by the way, you're the winner of that giveaway. I don't know if you just joined us, but you are the winner of All Is Not Lost. We need you to email us, info at terrydes.com, so we can get that to you. We need your address, and we'll send that teaching to you. You are the winner of the giveaway. His wrist is healed. Thank you, Lord. Put it in the comments what you're healed of. Um, Shireen says that her left ankle was healed and her right knee was healed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Man, we've got people being healed all over the place. We want to hear from you. Um, Karen says that they had a bad rotary in the right arm. People are being healed right now. Healed. Pain leaving in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lots of, lots of uh, people with their joints being healed on here. I see that. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, come on. I'm healed off. You put it in there. Nervousness is calming down. Wow, that's awesome. Right now, we command strength to come back, a coordination uh, to come back into that foot in Jesus' name. Somebody says they're breathing better. They're feeling heat circulating in their digestive system. That's because you're being healed. You're being healed. Thank you, Lord. You're receiving it in your body. This is exciting. Um, Katie says a neck pain is gone. Atlas axis word was mine. Uh, thank you. Sometimes I don't doesn't come out right, but I know it was your healed. No more neck pain. That's the, the axis of the neck. I'm, I'm looking for the word axis. I think I came out with orbit, but you know, <laughs> the Holy Spirit works in spite of me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Scoliosis. Let me just speak to scoliosis. Back straighten up in Jesus' name. Straighten up in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Someone's been healed from plantar fasciitis over here. Their shoulder's healed. Their stomach pain is leaving. 
their neuropathy pain. Yes, neuropathy pain leave right now in Jesus' name. Judy says, um, praying to get pregnant. Amen. Right now, I declare over you, Judy, you are fertile in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that, that fertility belongs to you. As many children, the fruit of your womb is blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Man, this is so exciting. Listen, make sure you keep putting your testimonies in there, things that you've been healed from. Make sure that you uh, that you, you can send them in um, via email as well, info at terrydays.com. We'd love to hear those and read those out. We also have prayer ministers that are standing by, ready to take your call to keep on agreeing with you. This is so exciting. I love this. We love seeing your testimonies. See, we said then we were going to be heal here and we were going to be healed, right? We were going to hear... And we were going to be healed. And that is what you received. You came here with expectation to hear and to be healed. And um, Judy says they, that they felt a tangible power in your stomach. Come on. That's it. That's how that's supposed to be. Listen, Vera, if the pain keeps coming back, you have authority. So all you need to do is speak to try it right now, Vera. I'm going to do this with you. Whatever it is, just say leave in Jesus' name. Leave. And you can name it. I don't know what the problem is. Leave in Jesus' name. And we agree with that. We agree with your faith right there, right now. Sometimes you have to be very specific right now in the name of Jesus. Now, right? And expect it to be now, right? Expect it to be now. Uh, Mercy says the pain in the neck is gone. Princess says they're healed from hotness in the lungs, spine, and stomach. Hallelujah. Listen, this is, this is the power of God working in your body. There is, this, this is not complicated. This is just we, we heard the word of God. We believed it for ourselves and, and we received it. And now we're responding to it. We're responding to it with our movement, with our, with our effort, with our words, with our testimony. Come on. Thank you, Lord. You know, if it, Bobby, if, it, if the pain seems to be connected to your anxiety, remember the anxiety isn't yours. This is really important. Don't claim it as yours. You say, if you start to feel anxious, you just say, I have the peace of God on the inside of me. I have the peace, the Prince of Peace on the inside of me. I do not need to be anxious. Sometimes you need to put your hand on your heart and say, heart, stop beating so fast. Calm down. Calm down, right? You can talk to yourself. I have the peace of God flowing through me. I have the peace of God on the inside of me, right? And as the peace starts to bubble up on the inside of you, the pain will start to leave. Those things are connected. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're so good to us. I want to take a moment. So, Daniel, I'm glad you feel better. That's what's supposed to happen. I want to encourage you, you know, press share if you're on Facebook, press like and subscribe if you're on um, uh, YouTube. Amen. Let other people receive their healing too. They need to hear this. There's so much negative news out there in the world today. Let's get the good news of Jesus, you know, out in the world. It says the fame of Jesus went around and people came to hear and to be healed. Let's help share the fame of Jesus out um, on our social media platforms and let people come and hear and be healed because what he's done for you, what he's done for these people, he's done for them also. Amen. And I want to encourage you, um, do go over to our website. Make sure that you get a hold of that free teaching that we're giving away today hearing god devotional all you need to do is go and let me let me show hold that up again this is the hearing god devotional and um, this is our devotional book on hearing god funny enough and you can go you can go in our store and the team has a link there um, and put it in your cart as if you were going to pay for it but don't pay for it because it's free and you just put in the code terrades tv and that will be that is the code and you'll receive that instantly um, in your email or Um, uh, Terridez, Terridez TV is the code and then you'll get it for free in your cart they won't charge you for it okay make sure you get that make sure you share this so other people can get that because it's really, really powerful um, uh, devotional also thank you to our partners and friends you make this possible you know uh, because of you we're able to travel the world we're heading out on our European tour really soon we're going to be in Texas we're going to be in California and then we're going to go off to Europe thank you partners and friends of Terry Dez Ministries if you've received from the Lord today if you are thankful and you'd like to be connected with what we're doing here at Terry Dez Ministries um, I want to say um, thank you so much and, and please go ahead and think about becoming a partner today 
or um, you can do that on our website too. There's lots of different places that you can go there. You can um, you can give into what's going on here, um, either one time or, or regularly. And um, we sure do appreciate people that stand with us. We're actually believing um, for, for part, more people to partner with us so we can get more word out. And um, we are building um, all kinds of different things. We're building a new social media studio. Uh, we've got a lot of things going on. Um, and so uh, we, we sure do appreciate that. You help us to get free resources out around the world through your monthly giving. And that's terridisministries.com forward slash give. Amen. So remember, our phone lines are open, 719-600-3344. If you'd like to carry on receiving ministry, you can carry on receiving ministry right here. You can watch it again on the replay. Thank you so much for joining us. We love you. And we'll be back again next week on Power Hour. Same time, uh, different place, same time. <laughs> we love you. Thanks for joining. Until next week, have fun. Love you. Be blessed.